Hi everyone, I'm Ryan Creek, this is Positive Discoveries, and in episode two, I'm really excited to share some incredible recent scientific findings with you. Let's get going. In this episode, I will cover two stories. First, in biology, the expedition Cyclops rediscovered the Attenborough's long-beaked echidna after 62 years. And second, in astronomy, ALMA provides the first evidence of a planet-forming disk around a star in another galaxy. Echidnas, also called spiny anteaters, are both strange and charming. And they're very easy to recognize with a unique waddling gait, protected spines, and long snouts that they use to sniff out and slurp up ants with an even longer tongue. The main types of echidnas are the short-beaked on the left, which is the most common, and then we have the less common long-beaked types on the right. These different species are distributed across New Guinea, Australia, and Tasmania. Together with their relative, the platypus, they form a group of primitive mammals called monotremes, which actually lay eggs. That's right, monotremes are mammals that lay eggs. Here is a photo of a baby echidna called a puggle hatching from such an egg. In 1961, a Dutch botanist decided to explore what is still a very remote area today, the Cyclops Mountains, which borders Indonesia and Papua New Guinea. They found lush, dense jungle in very challenging terrain and many species of flora and fauna that were unknown to science. And one of their discoveries was this echidna, and they obtained a single specimen. They fondly named it Attenborough's Long-Beaked Echidna. That, of course, was in honor of everyone's favorite naturalist and broadcaster, Sir David Attenborough, who obviously was much younger in 1961, but was already very popular and well-known in the naturalist world. But little did they know that it would be 62 years until the species would be documented again, leaving many to wonder about its continued existence. In fact, it made the GWC's Lost Species 25 Most Wanted list. But this year, an incredible team of field scientists came together in what they called Expedition Cyclops to enter this remote area again and document what they could find. They endured, as explorers have in the past, some pretty difficult conditions. One of them even broke their arm. But on the very last day before they had to leave, they checked the camera traps where they saw this. Does it look familiar? It should. It's walking like an echidna. After 62 years since its discovery, in November 2023, this was the first definitive proof of the existence of the elusive Attenborough's long-beaked echidna. Dr. Kimpton, an Oxford biologist and the Cyclops expedition leader, said of this discovery, it was intense relief because we spent so much effort and then euphoria. He further states that this is a flagship animal of these mountains and that it symbolizes why it's so important to protect them. But that's not all. I wouldn't be doing this story justice if I didn't tell you what else they discovered. This is footage of the mare's honey eater, the first sighting of this bird since 2007. And this is a new species of tree-dwelling shrimp. And now we shift gears to our astronomy story via the Atacama Large Millimeter Array, or ALMA. This array of radio telescopes is located in the country of Chile, specifically in the Atacama Desert region, which is one of the oldest and definitely the driest non-polar deserts in the world. Its remoteness, unique climate, and high elevation make it a perfect spot for astronomy, so it's no surprise that the largest astronomical project in the world, ALMA, also exists here. ALMA is comprised of many separate dishes that sync up together on areas of the sky, and by operating as one, they multiply their observation power many times over. Now that we've explained what ALMA is and how it works, let's talk about how planets, including those in our own solar system, are formed around stars. It all starts as massive clouds of dust and matter, like what you see in a nebula, only much more compact. 
and that dust spirals and condenses on itself under such incredible gravity that this may form a protostar in the center as seen here. That disk-like formation of the matter orbiting around it is called an accretion disk. Often co-occurring with these disks are these jets of ionized matter that beam far out into space along the axis of rotation perpendicular to the disk. These also help astronomers find them. And over time, the remaining debris in that accretion disk may come together or accrete into these protoplanetary bodies. How do we know this? Because we have observed this many times in various stages in our own galaxy. For example, the Gemini Observatory showed this happening around the star Beta Pictoris. Now there are many other galaxies besides our own, as shown in this deep field image taken by Webb, which I discussed in the last episode. And based on the observable laws of physics, scientists predicted that planets form in the same way in those galaxies too. In 2018, astronomers were using the Multi-Unit Spectroscopic Explorer, aka MUSE, to examine this part of the sky in the constellation Mensa, which actually looks more like this. And this includes objects entirely outside of our own galaxy, in a galaxy called the Large Magellanic Cloud, and they zeroed in on this area and found what appeared to be a star emitting a jet in two directions from its axis. They named this star HH 1177 and suspected that it also had an accretion disk, but they needed more information to confirm this. And that's where ALMA came into play. And when ALMA examined HH 1177, the data was conclusive. Not only was there a jet, but there was also a disk of material around this star. And Dr. Anna F. McLeod, Associate Professor at Durham University, said that when she first saw this evidence, I could not believe that we had detected the first extragalactic accretion disk. It was a special moment. We know disks are vital to forming stars and planets in our galaxy, and here, for the first time, we're seeing direct evidence for this in another galaxy. So, the next time you look up at the sky, I hope you think, not only do most of those stars in our galaxy have planets, but there are many separate galaxies, each with their own stars, and now we know for sure that they also appear to be capable of forming their own planets. That concludes episode two of Positive Discoveries. I'm Ryan Creek. Thank you so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you learned something in the process. Please follow me for more episodes like this one. And as always, let's remember to be kind, positive, and curious. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.